for most of our videos, how to make everything is limited to a rather strict rule that I can only use items as they're naturally available in nature. So behind me, I have all these buckets filled with various raw resources I've collected for past and future projects. I got limestone, I got iron ore, I got obsidian, etc., etc. But we also end up collecting a lot of excess materials and equipment, all of this stuff behind me. So in the spirit of trying to upcycle and find new purposes for old stuff, we're starting a new series where rather than making things from scratch, we're trying to find new uses for old stuff. So me and the rest of the How To Make Everything team, which includes Brian and Chris and our latest addition, Joey, we will each try to find our own unique solution to a challenge by trying to reuse leftover items. In this sub-series, we're calling Upcycle. For our first challenge, it's to actually solve an issue we have in an upcoming video on trying to make laundry detergent from scratch. So in that, we need to actually test it, and none of us are willing to sacrifice our laundry machine in the likely case it's gonna break it. So for this first challenge, we're gonna try and build our own laundry machine from scratch, not from scratch. Using whatever leftover materials we can find and see who can come up with the most creative and effective design. Let's get started. So for my project, I'm gonna try and reuse the CO2 canister we've had from a kind of a project that ended up not going anywhere and I keep chipping over it. So I wanna find another use for it. And I also have a bunch of PVC piping left over from my hydroponic garden and some other miscellaneous projects. So I'm gonna try and find a way to use all these together with my laundry machine. Now for Brian's project. So for my laundry machine build, I found this composting bin at one of my neighbors. They were willing to give it up for this project. My plan is to hook this up to my bike. It'll be pedal power, which will make this thing rotate like this and wash. It has this middle piece, which is used to get air in here. I'm gonna have to take this out. And then there's a crossbar that's all rusted out. So one of the first things I'm gonna need to do is to completely clean and disinfect this. And what better place to clean a disgusting compost barrel than a car wash? Now that that's done, it's on to sealing the barrel. To get the extra bicycle parts I need, I headed to Cycles for Change, where they gave me some parts for free. All in all, I spent just under $20 for everything I needed. Now that the holes are sealed, it's time to secure it back to the frame. Meanwhile, Joey and Chris tried to build a Rube Goldberg washing machine from some miscellaneous parts they had. For my laundry machine, I decided to enlist the help of Joey because we think alike. Nope. Building this project was a dream come true. Joey and I were a match made in heaven. We thought so impractically that we became practical together. I, I had to. The most intricate piece of our machine was definitely the trebuchet because Joey spent so much time counterweighting. While Joey built the pulley system, I fixed a tube and a fan. And before we knew it, we were outside blocking the fire escape, assembling our Rube Goldberg machine. Back to my project. The idea I came up with involves the infamous Tide Pods that became a meme at the beginning of the year for being tantalizingly delicious despite their toxicity. So I figured I'd find a way to make them even more lethal and build a device to launch Tide Pods long distance to the dirty clothing via a setup similar to a t-shirt cannon. So first I need to build the barrel and plunger that gets pressurized to propel the Tide Pod out. I was hoping to make this a rapid fire and reloading gun for extra cleaning ability, so set the plunger on a spring so it'd reset from the next shot.
Now back to Brian's project. I hit a roadblock. I was looking for actually one of the round composting bins that spins. The next one that I found that was in my neighborhood was this one, which was great, but it's oblong. When this thing spins, it's going to cam, meaning that the lower half is gonna be heavier than the top half. It'll always be kind of an off kilter rotation. Always be working against the chain, always be working against the bike. The plan is I think just to kind of backtrack a little bit, repurpose this barrel so that it will be a little more symmetrical, it will spin on an even plane. I was trying to pretend that it wasn't a problem, but it is. Early on in our test, we began losing the wheels attached to our rinse cycle. We built the trebuchet and it was our most valuable asset because it really showcased the kinetic energy that can cause a laundry ball to be launched across the room. Without the help of Joey and this trebuchet, this project would have been pretty boring in my opinion. All in all, the Rube Goldberg machine was two days of trial and error. We had to readjust and rebuild the machine several times and it took over 50 attempts before we felt comfortable enough to move on to the next stage. So please enjoy some of our best snickers, guffaws, and jocularities as two Rubes <laughs> try to build a Goldberg machine. The way our machine worked was we load a shirt into a hamster ball which rolls and falls into a bucket as a balloon of detergent is popped over it. The trebuchet launches it into a bin of water on wheels to rinse it, which then rolls away, causing a basket on pulleys to pull the shirt over a fan, which would then dry the shirt, with a few steps in between. Every time that we had to change the balloon on the pulley system, it adjusted the weight and changed the reaction ever so slightly. One thing has always remained consistent, that we have a rake boot a boot that is attached to a rake. Once this item was stepped on, it triggered the rest of the reaction. <laughs> the lucky red hat test. I'm wearing this for 10 years, it's done me well. And there it goes. No! Oh, oh, it's got, nope. We had some reactions that seemed like a success until the very end. After a while of seeing almost complete successes, we decided to invite Andy out and see how he liked our machine. <laughs> he was having a little bit too much fun with our failures. After about wasting an hour of Andy's time, we decided we'd rather have him go work on how to make everything so we don't fall behind. Let's give this a shot. Tide Pod got the water for the rinse cycle. In theory, this should work. Load it up. Let's open the barrel and let it release. it and seal it. Bubbles. It broke. It broke. <laughs> that seems like a good sign. <laughs> Maybe more of a shotgun. It's gonna take an incredible amount of force to actually pop this. <laughs> so I think a big issue is uh, it's a lever. So like I can't do it super quick. That's kind of a limiting factor at this point, I think. Yeah, the faster I can get it open, the better. Let's see if I can get uh, a button release on this or something. So in the end, I ended up taking a bit of back and forth trying to figure out the best way to make this work. I've ended up buying special parts with a button to release all the air at once. 
which I thought would be an ideal solution, and it would have been, except it was only available at a smaller diameter. So by using this, I was getting less air and less power out at once. So I decided to go back to the ball valve. Next, I tried to hook it up to a little motor to try and open it super quick. Fortunately, it takes a lot of torque and no combination of gears without getting super complicated was able to make it work. So I decided to just go back with the regular valve and just hook it up with a pair of vice grips, which gives it a little bit more leverage to open it and close it. One thing to improve it, I noticed, is that I'd cut the barrel so short that the plunger would go past it and release all the air at that point, limiting how far and how much of a push it could give. So I cut it and I put a little bit longer tube on it to uh, hopefully give it a little bit more push. Still not quite the ideal firepower I was aiming for, I was hoping for something with a little bit of range, but uh, this ended up more as a shotgun blast, which uh, I think still works for my needs and uh, still definitely weaponized Tide Pods. So all I gotta do is take it out and test it out now and uh, just need to find a volunteer. Oh, hello there, just a deer. I think I have an idea to rescue this. Uh, I don't think it'll take me off my schedule too much. And just like that, I'm back on track. Now it's time to mount the gear. In order to make it all one unit, I need to mount the bike directly to the wooden frame. All right, so my laundry machine is almost done. I have this gear that I got from the used parts bike shop, and I'm going to use this rod and mount it through uh, onto the laundry machine. We'll see if it works. In order for the gear to turn freely like I needed it to, I had to mount it backwards. Now it's time to attach the chain. To get my clothes in the barrel, I have to have an access panel. Just so happened I had this extra rubber mat laying around, which is gonna be a perfect seal for my hatch. Now to assemble the hatch bracket. So let's do the final step and test it out. So now to test it out. I got this brand new white shirt. I'm gonna get it a little dirty here. All right. After a few minutes, I took the shirt out to see how it's faring, but I think this is enough proof that my laundry machine works. We quit! We do not have any more time left in the day. Joey's crying. We got it to work once. Yes! But maybe another day, another two days. We already failed the challenge because we bought half this stuff, so it's not upcycled. I shiv. We try. We try. <laughs> we just can't figure out how to do this right. So. Another day. Now to put my gun to the test. Oh no, I dropped the shirts. Oh, it's all dirty. Oh no, I've only made it worse. Let's get you dressed up. You're so easy. The problem with the Tide Pods is they are actually pretty strong, but they're water soluble. So I gotta load it with water first so that uh, then they will be soft enough to pop when they hit. Maximum pressure brought to you by Tide. A bit of water. There we go. It's a little bit more soap time. I missed. All right, so not necessarily the most effective, 
don't have too much of a range, but I would say that shirt is cleaner. Let it dry off and then see how well it did. It's an improvement. After I had thrown in the towel, I had decided to participate in the upcycle project because I had all these leftover pieces from my Rube Goldberg machine that I could actually put to practical use. My first step was to epoxy the wheels for the spinning mechanism. I used way too much epoxy because I didn't want the wheels to fall off this time around. After that, I drilled a bunch of holes into a five gallon bucket so that water could swish and swash in and out during each cycle. Then I cut a hole for the drill so the bucket could spin. Then I attached a plate to the bucket with a drill bit to help it spin. After that, I put the bottom half of the machine in the sink to make sure that it would fit. Then I decided, hey, I could use a top half. I decided to use the hinges from our last creation. So I cut a notch with the Dremel and screwed and glued the leftover pieces into the machine. My upcycled laundry machine was really coming together. All that was left was dremeling a few holes for the faucet and the dryer. Through all the roadblocks in this project, the only thing holding me back was the drill. So at the last moment, I decided to replace it with another one and then the laundry machine worked right away. It's working! Got a fish tank pump. Pumping out the water, getting everything ready for the rinse cycle. Yeah. I'm gonna come back after it drains. Unfortunately with the drill, I was not able to make it hands-free like I intended. So I stood there the entire time and washed my shirt awkwardly. Dry cycle. Besides filmmaking, I'm really not an expert in anything else, but it was really encouraging using these tools for the first time and putting something together. I think in the hands of someone who's competent with tools, this project could be a huge success. Now back to my Tide Pod gun for some last few tweaks. So one last ditch attempt to try and make this work, I realized I could probably just skip the regulator itself and go directly off of the CO2 tank. The regulator is dropping it by, by about a factor of 10, so this will have 10 times the power. I don't know if the hosing and everything will be able to stand up to that pressure, but it's hopefully just gonna release it all at once. Maybe it gets some real distance now. Also, painted it black so it looks nicer. Woo! <laughs> Got a little bit more range now. All right, so with my last few tweaks, it uh, has definitely gotten a bit more powerful. I would not want to get hit with this, but if I did, any blood or injury would be immediately washed away and be pretty clean. So, uh, let my shirt dry out and see how well it did. Unfortunately, my setup wasn't exactly designed for the high pressures I had to resort to to get it to fire. And uh, after just a few shots, it's already busted. So it's a partial success for my design. Still let the shirt dry out overnight, and uh, as you can tell, not the cleanest. I think it's a very limited area where it actually cleans, and uh, the spots I hit are somewhat cleaner. They also have like bits of Tide Pod still stuck on there too. So probably not the most effective. Oh wow, you've been working out, didn't you? You can turn the camera off now. Meanwhile, Joey got frustrated with the convoluted machines we were making and decided to take things old school. I decided to simplify things and use the oldest washing machine in Minnesota, the Mississippi River. It looks a little cleaner. And machines are wet. It's a little cleaner. In the end, Joey's actually probably looked the cleanest of all of our attempts. We hope you enjoyed this experimental side series. If you like this and want to see us do more, leave a comment below. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe and check out other content we have covering a wide variety of topics. Also, if you've enjoyed these series, consider supporting us on Patreon. We are largely a fan-funded channel and depend on the support of our viewers in order to keep our series going. Thanks for watching.